And I'm just sick of this, dude. It's my second one today. Here you go, baby. Welcome to the vlog. And I'm gonna be honest, guys, today I really didn't wanna make this video as it's actually gonna be kind of a sad one. But I'm not gonna let this whole video be a sad one. So first, I'm gonna start off this video by giving you guys some updates on some animals. What's up, babies? All right, let's start this out with some scorpion tail geckos. Come here, you little rascals. Come here. And I just gotta say, I absolutely love these little guys, dude. They're so incredibly bold and that little pigeon face. They literally look like a pigeon. I absolutely love it. And you know what I really like about these guys? They're incredibly bold. Like they show no fear at all. And I really love the tails. So in case you guys didn't know, these are called scorpion tail geckos and they're not really popular in the hobby yet. They're just kind of like a sleeper gecko. And in case you guys didn't remember, I got these guys at the reptile super show. I got a male and a female. And I think these are gonna be really popular here in the next few years. But like, dude, they're just so incredibly stupid. Like, really, dude? Haha, <laughs> who feels stupid now? Yeah, that's what you get, ugly. I hate you guys. And yeah, like, dude, feeding them is so much fun. They're actually really good hunters. And you know, I've tried to get them to drink out of a water bowl, but they just don't really seem to really like drinking out of a water bowl. So I just really missed them and they seem to drink the dew drops then. But yeah, these guys are incredibly hardy and easy to care for. And honestly, I think they would make a really good beginner gecko for most people. All right, off you little monsters go. And you guys know I just have to show off the collar lizards. Seriously, dude, what is with everyone in poop today? You know, I used to always make fun of the crapper guy at the job site. All right, come here, Captain Crunch. And yeah, this is a blazing blue collar lizard. And just look at the deep blues on him. Isn't that crazy? There's hardly any reptiles this blue. I mean, my electric blue day geckos are really blue like this. But I mean, look at this guy. So I actually hatched him out of the egg myself and he's only like seven months old. Would you believe me that he actually has a lot more color developing still to go? And guys, you know what's great? So I got this female right here and this is Captain Crunch's girlfriend. And if you guys look carefully right here, you'll see that she has orange markings. This means she's gravid. So I'll be having more babies from this stud here soon. Look, food, you little monster. Yeah, I know you want it. Oh, come on, dude. Yeah, I know you'll eat it. That's a good girl. All right, that's enough of these monsters. Let's go to the turtle now. You guys are gonna like this one. All right, this little monster is a Diamondback Terrapin. And just like, look at all the whites on him. But no, he's been doing really good for me lately. He's eating and drinking just fine. And I think he really likes his little enclosure over here. All right, let's feed him real quick. All right, let's get you some little shrimpies. But yeah, this guy's my absolute dream turtle. I mean, how can you not love the white and blacks on him? And his name is Domino. I know, pretty fitting name, right? But yeah, I'm so excited. I got like a 180 gallon aquarium waiting for him when he gets older. But yeah, I love absolutely working with these animals. They're just so much fun. And I want to show you guys my projects that I'm planning for 2023. All right, I'm gonna show you guys the green tree pythons. Man, you're just messing everything up in here. But yeah, this is my female green tree python. And I believe she's a giant pearl, but look at the greens and the blues on her. I just love how the blue is just like, it's like a sea green, but it blends in so perfect. I mean, look at it. It just kind of reminds me of like an ocean wave. And the yellows on her face are pretty awesome. So I actually did try to breed these guys last year. I paired her up to my really awesome blue male skyline. And I actually got some eggs out of them. But I remember like my best friend came over and he was like, hey, Ryan, can I see those eggs? I'm like, yeah, dude. And it's been like a month since I've had these eggs, right? And then when I went to open up the incubator to show them, they all rotted away. And it was weird. Like the eggs all looked like perfect, pearly white. And they were just like, looked really nice. And then I was just like super bummed, dude. I was just like, damn. How did this happen? You know, I mean, it was my first attempt and I didn't brewmate my snakes. And I was told that it's best to brewmate them for better sperm count. So I brewmated them this year and I'm going to be pairing these guys up this year. So hopefully I have better luck this time. But yeah, this is my male skyline right here that I was talking about. And if you look on his dorsal, 
along his whole entire body, you'll see just a bunch of blues and it's just like, look how much blue there is. That's why I'm thinking he might be a designer. But the reason why I called him a skyline is because along the blues, you see all the white speckles. And dude, when I look at it, I just kind of think of like little clouds and stuff. So that's why I decided to call him skyline. Because I mean, just look, dude, perfectly fitting, right? All right, and I got one more project I wanna show you guys. Don't judge the messy room, this is my spare room. So right here's a wine cooler and I got some hognose snakes in there and they've been brewmating in there since December 5th and it's February 6th today, I believe. So I'm actually gonna be taking these guys out in about a week or so. But yeah, let me show you guys. I believe this one's the mail. All right, and what we got right here is, is an extreme red hognose. Just a normal morph, just uh, some coloration into them. But yeah, he was my first ever hognose snake and Dude, I'm so excited to be breeding these guys. Like, in my opinion, out of all the snakes you can have as a pet, I think personally hognose snakes are the most fun since they're actually diurnal and like super active. But yeah, he's a little bit over a year old. All right, I'm not gonna bug him too much anymore. God, I can't wait till you come back out of the wine cooler. Then the one right here is the female. Okay, I don't think I'm gonna hold her because she might bite me. She's pretty mad right now. I could hear her huffing and puffing. But this girl right here, she looks like a normal, but she's actually a conda het albino. So I'm hoping that when I do actually get babies from these two, that I'll get a mixture of some conda albinos and like some normal albinos. I'm really excited, but I'm also nervous because I hear like the female hognose snakes will actually eat the male sometimes. So yeah, I really hope she doesn't eat the male. I don't know why they do that. They just do from what I'm told. So let's hope I don't end up with that horror story. All right, back in you guys go. All right, enough beating around the bush. I'm gonna talk to you guys why I brought you here today and I'm not excited about it. So some of you guys may remember a community post or from my social media pages, how about how I'm always hatching reptiles right before I travel to these shows. Well, I hatched out some electric blue day gecko babies, right? And they've been doing amazing. It's been like a month. They've been eating, they've been drinking, they've been active. I've been having really good luck with it. I felt so good about it that I decided to make a post about how I'm actually finally having success with these babies and I'm not failing with them anymore. Well, after that post, you know, like the next day, I didn't see the babies at all. And I'm just like, oh, they're probably just gonna hide for a bit. And I didn't see them. And then the second day, I didn't see them almost all day. And then I started getting worried. So I decided to go inside their tank during the night, right? Flash a light. And when I was in there, I saw this really big black widow and a bunch of webbing in there. And so I freaked out and I killed the widow. And I got this really bad feeling in my gut that they didn't make it. And I didn't see them for another half day on the third day. So I went in there, I decided to take out, rip the cage apart, rip out all the plants. And sadly, I found a dead gecko baby in one of the webs. And I never found the other bodies, so I just lost the babies, you know? And I've been having failures with this recently, if you guys remember from this video. And I'm just... And I'm just sick of this, dude. This is a gecko project that I've been working really hard since last year to get going, but I keep having failures after failures from mistakes. And now I lost these geckos to a spider. And I don't even know how this spider got in this enclosure. It's just a little exoterra. It must have climbed in through like the vent as a baby and then just grew in there and just started feeding off the fruit flies. And now it fed off my geckos. It's just like right when I finally started learning from my mistakes, it just, I just get crapped on dude. And just makes me hate myself. And I'm just tired of this dude. You know, like working with animals isn't easy, you know? And I really hate that I'm even making this video again about failing with these geckos again. But you know, as a content creator, I promised myself that I would be honest with you guys because I really do hate the creators that are always acting like everything's perfect and they try to hide their failures. No, I don't want to be like that. But still, I don't like making these videos. It just sucks, man. And so I want to show you what I'm going to be doing from now on with my gecko babies because I'm not using that enclosure again. And what I'm going to be doing from now on with my gecko babies is I'm going to be using the shoebox case that I got from Costco, right? You know, you get a four pack of them for like 30 something dollars. But what I did with this enclosure was I it came with two doors. There's one on the front and one on the top. I just actually popped out the top one and then cut out a piece of aluminum screen and just hot glue gunned it. And then there's no other way for any spiders to get in. But also the reason why I decided I wanted to do this kind of case was because since it's all clear, I can literally look at it from every corner and every side and if there's any signs of a web, then I will actually be able to just take that web out right away. 
So I actually do got some more gecko babies that just hatched literally the day before I noticed they died. So I do have a couple of babies in here this time and I'm just hoping like I don't actually fail this time, you know? It's just, I just hate failing, you know? I'm just having bad luck, man. Well, yeah, like I said, this uh, video is a sad one and I really didn't want to make this vlog, but I'm tired of failing and I'm just sick of it.